This is my first pair of uh, Shell Cordovan boots. There were two things that I expected and were confirmed, but there were three details that surprised me. Let's go. How are you going? Welcome back to Bootlosophy, and if you're new here, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live and work on, the Wajak people of the Noongar lands. Today, I'm taking a look at uh, this pair of Alden Indy boots in Horween's Shell Cordovan. And my very first pair of Shell Cordovan boots, in fact, Shell Cordovan anything. <laughs> this is uh, obviously an Indy boot, but it's a collaboration between Alden and one of their retail partners, uh, confusingly called Brogue, or in long form, Brogue Gentleman's Shop in San Col uh, Carlos in California in the US. The Alden Shoe Company, or Alden of New England, is a 140-year-old shoe manufacturer founded by Charles Alden in Massachusetts. In those days, particularly after the invention of the machine-stitched Goodyear Welt construction, that part of the United States apparently burgeoned in shoemaking companies. But by the end of the 20th century, many had either moved production out of the US or were not able to compete against companies who had and closed down. Now, certainly in 2017, it was still cited by the SF Gate News site that New England and Boston in particular still had the largest concentration of experienced workers in the shoe manufacturing industry. In fact, manufacturers like New Balance, uh, Clarks, Reebok and Rockport moved to the area. However, in terms of heritage stitched construction brands, the companies had thinned out so that Alden is just one of the few left. Uh, in today's online shopping world, they remain one of the few who sell exclusively through their retail partners. If you go to their website, you'll very quickly see that it's not intended for the likes of you and me, but more for retailers trying to buy wholesale. It's stated that they still use this retail model because of their long relationship with the retail partners, whom they treat as gold by the way, and because they insist that the best way to buy your boots is to try them on and be advised by an experienced store clerk uh, on your best fit. That's one of the reasons why I think people who actually buy Olden boots always talk about fit and comfort. You do not walk out of one of their partner stores with a poor fitting boot. The first of two things I expected, which was confirmed when I got these, was that they would be super comfortable. The True Balance Last, uh, in my correct Alden True Balance size, hugged my feet snugly without any pinching or uh, slippage, uh, and the legendary underfoot arch support was as expected. There's obviously been recent controversy over their pricing because they use leatherboard insoles. If you want to take a look at the dispassionate discussion about boot pricing, take a look at my video up here. In partnering with retail stores, they supply their stock models like the Alden Indy 403 and the Indy 405, but they also collaborate with their retail partners to produce partner designed boots. Now to tell the truth, from what I can see, uh, they are simply variations and stock models, but retail partners design exclusive models by adding or switching features such as an extra stitch or a, sh a shell cordovan. So the second of the two things I expected, which was confirmed, was that despite the different upgraded materials in the uppers and the outsole, they are fairly stock indies in design and pattern, if not construction. So this is called the Alden X Brogue Arai Indie Boot, A-R-A-I. Let's just break that down. It is an indie boot, mock toe uh, stitch, mock mock toe stitch on a True Balance last. It's called the Alden X Brogue collaboration, not because it has any brogue holes punched into it, but because it's a collaboration with retail partner Brogue Gentleman's Shop from California. And it's called the Arai because well, I don't know why exactly. <laughs> if you Google Arai, you go through motorcycle helmets <laughs> and the Automotive Research Association of India, both of which I suspect is not why this is called the Arai. Uh, but eventually you do find a reference to Hiroshi Arai, a Japanese footwear designer and made-to-measure handcrafted shoemaker. 
That might be the connection, but I don't know if uh, these were designed by him or have any relation to his workshop in Japan uh, because Brogue's website makes no reference to him. I bought this pair used for my friend uh, Eli Aquino, who has an amazing collection, but some uh, in a size 8 when he's actually a size 8 and a half. His loss is my gain as I got these very lightly worn at a bargain which I'll talk about at the end. Ellie is on Instagram as the Heritage Tribute and you should check him out and give him a follow. Uh, of course, not forgetting to like and subscribe to this video before you go there. <laughs> I will leave a link to his Instagram account below. In the stock 403 or 405 style of indie boot made famous by Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, while the design had a work boot history, in today's fashion is clearly a dressy casual boot. This model is the same 5 inch high in the shaft uh, from the top of the heel uh, with a wide fitting True Balance last, low flat untreaded sole, uh, this time in leather, and with this famous uh, mock, mock toe stitch around the apron of the van. Here's one of the three surprises I wasn't expecting. The mock toe stitch on a 403 or a 405, and in fact in almost all of the indie models, is a cosmetic stitch. Basically, they make a low profile dressy boot and then run two stitches around the apron without stitching anything together. They do not connect two pieces of leather around the apron and they lie flat as a cosmetic stitch. These, on the other hand, are stitched around the apron to create a puckered edge uh, around the apron. It is raising the leather at that stitch. Now, my understanding is that in order to do this puckered stitch, you can't do it by machine, so it is hand sewn. As a hand sewn stitch, it is extremely even, very clean and raised a, a very even pucker all the way around. The second surprise I got was when I put them on and looked down. Now, by no means are the standard indie models duck feet shaped. They are not uh, especially wide looking despite the True Balance last uh, offering a combination shape of narrow in the heel and the waist and wider in the ball of the foot. These on the other hand look almost web feet shaped. <laughs> now, let me tell you that they are not uh, wider than standard. I have actually measured the width across the ball and measured the volume profile around the boot across the ball and compared them to my Alden 405 in the same size. The measurements are almost exactly the same. I think it's an optical illusion caused by the darker color and the puckering around the mock toe stitch, which takes your eye across the boot rather than along it. I am aware that extraneous details can fool the eye and this is proof. As for my third surprise, I'll leave that until I talk about construction and the materials used. So, what would you wear with these? In my view, the dark brown Alden 403 in Chrome XL can be worn with a suit, even if the pumpkin colored 405 probably should not. However, all the indies are probably better suited, pardon the pun, <laughs> as smart casual boots. I think this Arai model is not an exception, although in the shiny shell cordovan, I think I'd opt for a much more smart look, uh, definitely business casual or casual wedding attendance type casual. Because it's so dark and shiny, uh, one of my favorite outfits to wear with these boots is an all black outfit. But try to keep the fabric different, otherwise you look like a waiter. Uh, in this case, the chinos are in a textured twill cotton while the shirt is in plain smooth poplin. For business, you can put on a smart blazer sticking to the monochrome black or I prefer grey and in this case grey in a check which adds variation and pattern. This creates a conservative dressiness to the look and a darker silk pocket square dresses the whole look up a notch. The dark tonal dye used on the sole edges emphasizes the overall dark look and make the, sole, uh, make the soles look low profile. In the cooler seasons, you can put on a conservative v-neck jumper under the blazer, again in a monochrome, uh, this one in a dark grey. The pocket square can be turned around to show tails that have a contrasting colour to give the outfit a pop. In winter, you can uh, swap the blazer for a black leather coat. If you choose a blazer style coat instead of a bomber, you can still carry out the smart casual or business casual look, but in an edgy leather coat. 
Now let's take a look at the construction of these boots. In this video, I'm not going to take a, a, as deep a dive as I normally do into the construction. If you want to check out the details of the construction, go take a look at my review of the Alden 403 Indie boot up there. Now in this video, I will walk through the aspects of the construction, but I'll spend more time on the different materials used in this Arai Indie. First of all, it is a 270 degree Goodyear welt construction. Uh, in this model, they use a storm welt. The thin strip of leather called the welt uh, has a carved lip uh, carved into the uh, top of the welt. Uh, the welt runs around the front three quarters of the boot and is used to connect the insoles and uppers to the outside using two stitches, one inside the boot and one outside the boot which goes through the outer edge of the welt and the outsole itself. The lip carved into the welt is pushed up against the leather so as to provide more water resistance, hence a storm welt. The back end of the boot is glued, stitched and nailed directly to the insole inside. This is built on the standard Indy True Balance uh, foot shaped last that makes the shape of a particular boot. The True Balance is famous for comfort because of the combination design, narrow and snug in the heel and the waist, and wide and comfortable in the ball before rounding off at the toe. It also incorporates arch uh, support inside, including the turning in of the medial side just under the arch to tuck in under, uh, under the arch and support it. Although in this case, I find that cantilever construction a little less obvious than in the calfskin 405s and the Chrome XL 403s. I expect because uh, the shell cordovan is stiffer and maybe doesn't get lasted as easily around the curves. The arch support is further enhanced by a steel shank between the heel and the ball of the foot, which provides stiffness in the gap. It's also even further enhanced by the use of a Thomas heel. The heel has a curved shape that pushes it out further on the medial side so that it ends up further under the arch to help hold your arch up. The sole construction has several layers of leather and the infamous leatherboard insole, but it still looks quite low profile and hence suitable for a more smart casual boot. The outsole itself is different from stock models which uses a cork infused rubber material. In the Arai, it's a double oiled leather sole. Now, some people hate leather soles, <laughs> but I really love them because in the right leather and properly treated, I think they are more comfortable than most rubber compounds, which can be hard on your feet when you're, when you're pounding the pavements. These are impressively comfortable and shock absorbing and being double oiled, they don't look horrible when scratched up and they are quite grippy in the wet. Double oiling is a treatment to infuse the leather sole with oils that waterproof and protect the soles and in my opinion provides them with a stickier surface when you're walking around. If not looking closely, I would have assumed these are the usual neoprene cork soles just from the feel under my feet. Now moving upwards, the uppers are in shell cordovan and being a shell cordovan, I honestly can't tell whether it's actually leather lined like the 405 and the 403. It feels like the same soft kid lining used in the 405 and the 403, but Shell Cordovan doesn't have a rough out nap on the underside, so it could just be the underside of the shell. And Shell Cordovan is thick, so you can't exactly measure it and say, ah, it's a double layer. Um, for those of you who don't know, Shell Cordovan is not actually leather. It is the muscular fibrous membrane that sits under the dermis layer on a horse's bum. Imagine leg day at the gym and you're doing squats. The muscle membrane just under your skin and activating your glutes. You don't have this, but if you were a horse, that's what you're exercising. <laughs> there are other tanneries, but Horween, makers of Chrome Excel, is renowned for their Shell Cordovan. Shell Cordovan is unique in that it is super smooth, uh, without buffing during the tanning process, and it's not just shiny, it is lustrous in, in appearance. It's called shell, that part of the horse's butt, Cordovan after the Spanish city of Cordoba, where it was first tanned by the Visigoths as body armor and later by the ruling Moors who used it for everything because it was so durable, including, very ironically, horse saddles. <laughs> Poor horsey, wearing your cousin on your back. <laughs> uh, 
Horween produces shell cordobin in a variety of mostly brown colors, but is probably most famous for their color number eight shell cordobin. So this is my third surprise. This is my first shell cordobin anything, and being the first, I obviously wanted it in the iconic color eight. I have other color eight boots in Chrome Excel, my Wolverine 1000 mile boots, for example, uh, see up there. And they are all in varying shades due to age, uh, burgundy wine colors. This is dark. This is dark, dark. And indoors look almost black. In the sun, they are a very deep burgundy and only in very bright light do they show off their uh, wine colored undertone. Being my first shell color eight boots, I don't know if they come like this or if Ellie, who uh, kindly also supplied me with a jar of Sophia's color eight Cordovan cream, may have used that cream and it, perhaps it darkens the shell until it wears off. I don't know. It might also be that because he hardly wore them, the color may be lightened with wear in the elements, uh, like my Chrome Excel versions of Color 8. I'd be interested to hear uh, from wearers of Color 8 boots, shell cordovan especially, because the depth of the color was a big surprise to me. Anyway, hardware is painted to match and is the usual indie tiny, tiny close spaced eyelets and the closely spaced little baby speed hooks like little baby's teeth. Annoying. <laughs> Hard to lace through and always catching when you lace around the speed hooks. And I always feel the need uh, for little agile fingers of a master jeweler to lace up indies. To caring for shell cordovan. I am not at, uh, an expert in this material, so let's go to um, the horse's mouth. <laughs> Horween's website has a blog article called Shell Cordovan Care. I will leave a link to it below. I think it was written by Nick Horween, so, you know, expert. He writes that um, his own shoe care regimen is simple and he outlines six steps. Uh, one, clean with a soft damp cloth and allow to dry naturally. Two, brush vigorously for several minutes using a horsehair brush. Several minutes, fellas, not a quick once over. I'm guessing the vigorously and the several minutes alludes to bringing out the oils and waxes in the leather. Number three, every 10 to 15 wears, apply a light haze of neutral cream cordovan or Venetian shoe cream sparingly. Number four, sit for at least 10 minutes or even overnight. Brush again, and he says, for as long as you can stand it. <laughs> Finally, number six, buff with a soft dry cloth. Maybe someone should invent a mechanical brushing arm. As for sizing, I guess my best advice to adhere to Alden's uh, objectives is to go to a store to get sized by an expert. But not all of us can do that, especially if we live 17,000 kilometers away from one. If you really know your size, the old advice of taking a half size down from Brannock worked for me. In my 403s, I'd read somewhere before I got them to get true to size, but that was a bit too big. It was a half size too big, and I, I use a removable insole to remove some of that volume. In my 405s and these, at my usual 8D, they work beautifully. That's the same size I take in Iron Rangers, Wolverine 1000 Mile, Higgins Mill, Parkhurst, and Grant Stone. As for value, these are listed on Brogue's website. Uh, at time of recording at US $975. A standard Alden 403 or 405 is US 680, so it's a jump, even on the higher price of an Alden standard model. Is it worth that higher price? First off, I think the standard Indy is worth near 700, even if I find it hard to afford a pair new. What I can afford to buy is not the same as the value of a product. Why do I think that? Go see my Alden pricing comparison video that I pointed you out to uh, at the beginning. Second, is this therefore worth a jump of nearly 300 US? Well, it is made from shell cordovan, an expensive material anyway. It is, I think, hand-stitched at the mock toe stitch. It is well put together, no matter what you think of using a leatherboard insole instead of leather. It uses a double oiled leather sole, which is unique. So depending on if you think a $700 boot is value, 
adding 300 is not ridiculous because of these unique add-on elements. Okay, so that's it. My first Shell Cordovan boot selling for US 975, but which I got very lightly used from the Heritage Tribute at US 600. I am very happy I got this. As I said, two expectations confirmed, uh, the comfort and that they are pretty much indies uh, in design, just in different materials. I also had three surprises, that the Colorate shell is so much darker than my Colorate Chrome XL boots, uh, that they look as, uh, so much wider than my standard indies, and that the mock toe stitch wasn't flat but looked like it was hand stitched to pucker the apron uh, at the stitch line. I hope you like this review. Don't forget, for more detail about Alden the brand and the detailed construction of indie boots, go see my 403 review. I'll leave a link to it below in case you missed clicking on it when it came up. And don't forget, click on like and subscribe. It really does help me, so I would really appreciate if you did that. Thank you. So keep watching, more reviews coming up every week. Until then, take care of yourself out there, and I'll see you soon.